There's nothing you can do about the past, but you can do a great deal about your future. You don't have to be the same person you were yesterday. You can make changes in your life, absolutely startling changes, in a fairly short period of time. You can make changes you can't even conceive of now. If you give yourself a chance, your abilities will grow. You have untapped talents and potential that you haven't even reached for yet. And as time goes on, you'll be able to reach deeper and deeper. The first thing you'll know, you'll be able to do things you never thought you could do. You'll be able to handle things you never thought you could handle. You'll have ideas that you've never had before. All of this is sparked by the goal setting process. When you know what you want and you want it badly enough, the answers will come to you. I can't tell you why it works. All I know is it works. Give yourself a chance to become all you can become and to accomplish all you can accomplish. I've got some key words for you to consider. Here's the first one, appreciation. That's number one. First of all, is to appreciate what you already have. Appreciation is unique. It has a sense of opening us up to even more if we appreciate, first of all, what we've already got. Democracy, freedom, free enterprise. To appreciate all of that, to appreciate our chance, to appreciate our opportunity, uh, to appreciate all that it took to bring us to this point. That sense of appreciation makes us unique. It makes us attractive in the marketplace. You know, it's easy not to appreciate. It's easy to sit down uh, to have your breakfast and, and not think about how did the salt get on my table? A sense of appreciation. Just the salt that I so casually salt my uh, eggs with in the morning. I'm telling you, if I thought about it for a while, I wonder where this salt came from. How many hands did it pass through by the time it reached my table? You know, who bent their back and mined it out of the salt mine? Uh, who packaged it and who shipped it? And how many phases did it go through before it finally conveniently reached my table and I pick it up so casually and salt my eggs? That sense of awe and appreciation, there's nothing like it. It makes you attractive to have the appreciation of what's around you, the appreciation of the contribution of other people, to appreciate all that it takes for each of us to be successful. You cannot succeed by yourself. You know, you can't make your fortune all alone. It takes many, many hands, many voices, and many people to support one success story. So, appreciation. I've had a new sense of appreciation for my parents who gave me my incredible start. I was an only child. They took extra time. It was unbelievable. Uh, I feel the effect of that now. As I've gone through all kinds of challenges as well as opportunities in my life, I still feel that anchor that holds me from the things they taught me, from the ideas they shared with me, the fact that they cared, the fact that they gave me that incredible foundation. It serves me today. That gives us a good taste to appreciate what we have. What it does, it, it, it opens up the channel. It makes us ready to receive even more. New ideas now can come flowing in. If the person has appreciated what's already there that's given them the support, made them as successful as they are at the moment. So appreciation. Second is comprehension. The ability to understand what we've got in our hand. That is so vitally important. Some people never recognize what they've got in their hand. And we know that by the evidence because they do so little with it. If they knew what they had, if they knew the power of what has come their way, if they knew what they had in, 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 in their hands, in their position, it would change their whole life. It would, first of all, alter their attitude. Second, it would give them a vision of the future that they never had before. Just a sense, a recognition, a comprehension, an understanding. And all of us have the ability to do that, to understand and comprehend what we've got. Just think about all of the parts of this opportunity, the people, the product, the opportunity, uh, all of the list of things that you've got now in your hands to use as the ways and means to transform your life and build your future. You know, a lot of people have dreams, but they dare not dream too much because they don't have the ways and they don't have the means. They don't have the opportunity 
They don't have the tools at their disposal. They don't have the influence. They don't have the training. They don't have the teaching. They don't go to classes like we do. They don't have the benefit of other people's experience like we have. When we look at all of that, uh, we ought to really try our best to comprehend what all we've got. Because if we truly see what we've got in our hands, we'll probably multiply what we can do with it in the future by two, by three, by five, by 10. So that's a key word for developing leadership, comprehension. Here's the next word, opportunity. You've got to be able to see opportunity, opportunity all around you, opportunity of where you are, opportunity of the people who can use the products that, that you've got, who can use your opportunity, uh, use your opportunity in, in terms of marketing, seeing the opportunity. If we're blind to the opportunity, it doesn't matter how valuable the products are, and it doesn't matter how valuable the system is. If you can't see the opportunity, it all gathers dust. It all goes to waste. You've got to see opportunity in every person you meet. That could be another person. That could be another Mark Hughes. Uh, that could be another future president's team member. Learn to see the opportunity that's right around you. It's easy to get busy and sort of blinded and uh, just walk along and not see what's possible and what's available. The reason I'm here today is because I saw the opportunity. An opportunity to expand my vision, an opportunity to refine my skills, an opportunity to meet people I'd never met before, an opportunity to go places I'd never gone before, an opportunity to become valuable to an institution, an opportunity to enhance my own uh, powers of development so that I could serve other people. I recognize this opportunity. It's why I'm here today. It's why I'm talking to you today. If I hadn't have seen the opportunity, I'd have passed, been doing something else probably mediocre. But here I am in a very splendid position, an unusual position, having an opportunity to use my experience and influence and skills to touch the lives in the future of millions of people. I saw the opportunity. I took advantage of it. And I want you to be able to do that too, be able to see the opportunity. Now here's what's next. And that is integrity. Integrity means those inner qualities that you do not compromise. The inner qualities that keeps you steady when sometimes everything around you is falling apart. The integrity that helps you to maintain character, all of those qualities that give you a chance to be better than you are at the moment on into the future. Integrity within yourself, integrity within the way that you do business, integrity within the way that you operate and conduct the business of the day. That's vitally important in the development of leadership. Next is morality. There's a right way and a wrong way. Civilization is simply a matter of suppressing that dark side of our nature and appealing to the bright, positive side of our nature. And that becomes sort of a moral code, not to yield to the temptation of doing ill to someone else, but rather appealing to the high side of our nature. Uh, President Lincoln, who was one of the presidents of America said, hopefully we will listen to the better angel of our nature that appeals to the high side, that says, sure enough, there is something to be said for morality, the right and the wrong. But let us constantly work toward developing ourselves on the moral side of doing what's right. And one of the best teachers of the morality is your own conscience. That little small voice inside that tells you you've crossed the line, that tells you this wouldn't be the right words to you, uh, this would not be for the betterment, this would not be win-win, uh, this is going to destroy, this is not going to develop. To listen to that inner voice so that we can stay on moral course. It's the challenge Mark has, it's the challenge the company has, it's the challenge all of us has to stay on the moral course of doing it right. The morality of the marketing system, doing it right, very important. There's no need to compromise that position and be tempted to do it wrong. Here's another one, people. One of the most important words in the vocabulary of leadership is people. Here's what's important to understand. People is where the fortune is. In fact, you could just interchange the two words, fortune, people. People 
fortune. The fortune is not in digging gold out of the earth because gold all by itself has no value. Nothing has a value unless a human being gives it value. What value is gold? You can't eat it. Uh, what value is everything else unless human beings give it value? To understand that people is where the fortune is. Developing customers who are people, developing distributors who are people. I talked to a banker one time and he said, I'm in the banking business. And I said, well, does a corporation borrow money from you? You know, do the banks and the, and, and the uh, offices and the office chairs and the, the systems of the corporation borrow the money? And he said, no, someone from the company comes and fills out a loan and I loan money to the company. Then I said, really what you're in is the people business. You're not in the money business or the banking business. You're in the people business. And so it's true with all of us. We're in the people business. A unique sense of appreciation. When I first saw this kind of marketing at age 25, I said to myself, if, if it's unlimited, the people I can introduce to the business, then I shall become wealthy. Because something told me, and I didn't have the full education back then, but something told me that if I found a way to provide benefit for someone else, I could earn money. Something told me, I must have gotten it from my parents, some of my early training that said, people is where the fortune is. So that's where you have to take great care in your business. Yes, take care of your money. Yes, take care of your system. Take care of the setup. Take care of the, of the meetings. Take care of all the details. But here's what you've got to do if you really want to make a fortune. Take care of your people. Because people is where the fortune is. If you help them grow, they'll help you grow. If you develop them under you, they will lift you up. Uh, you can lift up sales and it'll fall back down. You can lift up volume and it'll fall back down. Lift up the people and you won't fall down you'll have the foundation. There you'll be ready for the future. Develop these five abilities as part of your personal development quest. Here's the first one. Develop the ability to absorb. The ability to soak it up like you're doing today. Be like a sponge. Don't miss anything. And not just the words. It's true. Don't miss the words. But don't miss the atmosphere. Don't miss the color. Don't miss the scenario. Don't miss what's going on. Most people are just trying to get through the day. Here's what I want you to be committed to do. Learn to get from the day. Don't just get through it, get from it. Learn from it. Let the day teach you. Join the university of life. What a difference that'll make in your future. Commit yourself to learning. Commit yourself to absorbing. Be like a sponge. Get it. Don't miss it. I've got a personal friend of mine who's so gifted in this area. I think he has soaked up and remembers everything that's ever happened to him. He can tell you as a teenager where he was and what he did and what he said and what she said and how they felt and the color of the sky and what was going on that day. And the reason is because he gets it, he gets it, he gets it. I'm telling you, it's more exciting to have him go to Acapulco, come back and tell you about it than it is to go yourself. He's unbelievable. He's got this extraordinary gift. And why is it? When he's there, he doesn't miss anything. Here's a good phrase for you to jot down. Wherever you are, be there. Be there to absorb it up. Be there to soak it up. Take a picture if you can. But take pictures of your mind. Let your soul and heart take pictures. Get it. Capture it. Absorb it. That's such an important ability to develop. The ability to get it. Don't miss it. Don't be casual in getting it. Key phrase, casualness leads to casualties. Second, learn to respond. The ability to respond means let life touch you. Don't let it kill you, but let it touch you. Let sad things make you sad. Let happy things make you happy. I'm telling you, give in to the emotion. Let the emotion strike you, not just the words, not just the image. Let the feeling strike you. Let the emotion strike you. Here's what's important. Our emotions need to be as educated as our intellect. Our emotions need to be educated as well as our intellect. It's important to know how to feel. It's important to know how to respond. It's important to let life in, let it touch you.
I'm the greatest guy in the world to take to the movies. I get into a good movie. I want a good movie. Make me laugh, make me cry, scare me to death. Teach me something. Take me high, take me low. Just don't leave me as I was when I came in. Touch me, do something to me. Wow. I picked up the newspaper in Australia. The advertisement says, see Dr. Zhivago on the big screen. I said, my gosh, I gotta go see it on the big screen. I'd seen it, you know, two or three times before, but the big screen, I love the old theaters, right? The balconies and the chandeliers and the draperies and all the stuff, the big screen. So I go one more time, see Dr. Zhivago, and sure enough, I'm swept away one more time. Story of the Russian Revolution, Dr. Zhivago, and that whole scenario. I had always missed the importance of the ending of that movie until this time. The other times I missed it. I'm telling you, this time, I got it. Comrade General said, Tanya, how did you come to be lost? After he found her, right? Said, how did you come to be lost? And she said, well, I was just lost. He said, no, how did you come to be lost? She said, well, we were, you know, the city was on fire when we were running to escape and, and I was lost. He said, no, how did you come to be lost? And that's what she didn't want to say. He finally pressed her again. How did you come to be lost? And he said, well, she said, well, while we were running through the city and it was on fire, my father let go of my hand and I was lost. That's what she didn't want to say. Comrade General said, Tanya, that's what I've been trying to tell you. Komarovsky was not your real father. He was not. I'm telling you, I've been looking all over for you and I think I found you. This man, my relative, Dr. Zhivago, the poet, I'm telling you, he was your father. And Comrade General said, Tanya, I promise you this, if this man, your real father had been there, I promise you, he would never have let go of your hand. And I got it. This time I got the other times I'm eating popcorn and waiting for the movie to finish. I'm asking you to get it. Absorb and respond. Now here's the third ability. Develop the ability to reflect. Reflect means go back over. Study it again. Go back over these notes that you're taking today. Go back through the cassettes one more time. Read the text one more time. But there's more to it than that. Go back over your day. I call it run the tapes again. So that the day locks in firmly. Here's some good times to reflect. One, at the end of the day. Take a few minutes at the end of the day. Go back over the day. Who'd you see and what'd they say and what happened? How'd you feel? What went on? So that you capture that day. A day is a piece of the mosaic of your life. Number one, don't treat it casual. Number two, get from the day. And then number three, go back over the day so that it locks in that experience, the knowledge, the sights, the sounds, the panorama, the color motion picture of the day. Just lock it in so that it will serve you for the future, having that day, not missing. Next, take a few hours at the end of the week. Call time to reflect. Go back over your day timer. Go back over your calendar. Go back over your appointment book. Where did you go and who did you see and how did it feel and what went on? Capture that week. A week is a pretty good chunk of time. Next, take half a day at the end of the month. Call time to reflect. And do the same thing again. Go back over what you read. Go back over what you heard. Go back over what you saw. Go back over the feelings to capture it so that it serves you. Next, take a weekend at the end of the year to establish this year now firmly in your consciousness. Old Testament says, a unique scenario unfolded according to the law. And that was they worked nine years and the 10th year was a sabbatical. The tenth year, work nine, take the tenth year, and not just to relax, not just to replenish, not maybe just to get physically in shape, change of pace we call it in the modern society, but not just for that. 
I'm sure that in ancient days that sabbatical was to go over the last nine years, what went right and what went wrong and what worked well and what didn't work well. And how did you grow and how did you learn and how did you change and what have you got now after nine years that you didn't have at the beginning of the nine years? See, that's so valuable, a sabbatical, a sabbatical, some time, some time. There's also something to be said for solitude when you reflect. Sometimes you can reflect with somebody. Husband and wife reflect on the past year, right? Parents reflect with their children on the past year. How did we do it and how didn't we do it and how could we improve? Colleagues can reflect with each other. But now here's one of the most important. You got to learn to reflect with yourself. There's something to be said for solitude. There's something to be said for taking those occasions to shut out the world and shut out everything else for a while, for a while. When you live a very public life, you treasure solitude. A chance to reflect, go back over my life, go back over my skills, go back over my experiences. Alone, alone. There are some things you need to do alone, ponder, think. Here's what's really powerful, learning to gather up the past and invest it in the future. Gather up today and invest it in tomorrow. Gather up this week and invest it in the next week. Gather up this year and invest it in the next year. See, that's so powerful, rather than just hanging on one more year, hanging in there, seeing what's gonna happen. Learn, study, this is part of the personal development quest, becoming better than you are, more valuable than you are, not just in terms of economics, in terms of motherhood, in terms of fatherhood, in terms of being a better brother, a better colleague, making a better contribution to the family, to society, to the community, to the church, to the office, to the commitment, to the partnership. Doesn't matter what it is that has value. Work on yourself, then you bring more value to the partnership, to the marriage, to the franchise, to the corporation, to the enterprise, to the community, to the nation. Self-development, personal development. The best contribution you can make to someone else is self-development, not self-sacrifice. Self-sacrifice only earns contempt. Self-development earns respect. Pity the mother who says, I'm just gonna give up my life for my children. Self-sacrifice is not noble. Self-investment is noble from self-development. If I work on myself and become more valuable, think of what that'll do for our friendship. I used to use the old expression, you take care of me and I'll take care of you. I found out how shallow and short-ended that was. And I changed it to read like this, I'll take care of me for you. If you will please take care of you for me. And this is part of it, the personal development, that we work harder on ourselves than we do on our job. Now we bring that to the friendship. Now we bring that to the marriage. Now we bring that to the family relationship as a father, as a mother. And we develop the strength and we develop the power. That's key. And it takes, I think, this scenario of disciplines, these abilities, to acquire those gifts and those skills so that we bring more. Now, we bring more to the next week, we bring more to the next month, we bring more to the next year. If you follow this, absorb, respond, and reflect. I said to my father, when he was about to turn 76, his 76th birthday, I said, dear father of mine, can you imagine what it's gonna be like to gather up the last 75 years of your life and invest them in your 76th year? What a difference of philosophy, rather than just hanging on one more year. Gather up 75 and invest them in the next one. Gather up the last six years and invest it in the next year. See, that's so powerful in communication, which we're gonna study soon, so powerful. So consider this, one, the ability to absorb, second, the ability to respond, third, the ability to reflect. Act. When the idea is hot and the emotion is strong, that's the time to act. You say, Mr. Ron, I'd like to have a library like yours. See, if you feel strong about that, what you gotta do is get the first book.